Another busy day in the clinic. Let's see what we have today. Ah. There it is. All right. First patient, please. <laughs> Hello, what can I do for you, sir? Yeah, doctor, my right hand is trembling a lot. I'm worried sick about it. Can uh, you help me, please? Ah, uh, it looks just like Parkinson's disease. You know what? Why don't you take levodopa carbidopa, 62.5 milligrams, three times a day, not with the meals, mind you, and uh, I'll see you again in oh, three months' time. Here's a prescription. <laughs> well, Doctor, please, you have to take me seriously. Uh, uh, this is very bad news. It will change my life completely. I, I want good and reliable information. And I want to have part in making the decision to start treatment or not. And where can I find another patient like me? Uh, what, what can I do to make things better? So, this kind of medical care it's not the reason that you once became a doctor, is it? Hans, follow me. Let me tell you a little bit about Parkinson's disease, all right? Okay. Come on, have a seat. Where shall I sit, doctor? Hans, in the world you've just created, there is no more hierarchy. So, take any seat you like. Oh, I take that one there. <laughs> I've Coffee. purposely removed the uh, desk from my office because this is really working together in the healthcare system. And yeah. I want to tell you a little bit about Parkinson's disease, and I'm going to show you a video so you know what it really looks like. And I'll also show you the video because it shows you the power of patients and their ability to compensate for the disease. This is a nice little tool that was given to us by the Reshape team in Nijmegen. So, can you see this properly? Yeah, okay. All right. So we'll start the video now. It's a man with Parkinson's disease who's had the disease for a long time. Yeah, just move it. And um, as you can see, he has severe difficulties walking. But in the office, this man told me he was actually able to ride his bicycle. Wow. And I said, that's impossible. Yeah. You see, he's severely handicapped. Um, but he told me he was able to ride his bicycle. Mm -hmm. So we decided to take him outside and see what it looked like. Because I was surprised by this message. I said, you know, this is impossible. And this is not possible, I think. You think it's possible I that don't this think man? So. No, I don't think so. Well, there he is. Oh, wow. Well. We went outside and have a look. And we were just as surprised as you are probably yeah. now. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing, yeah. And I think I'm showing this video to you because patients have a huge power to compensate for their disease. So even though patients have, of course, severe difficulties, they have remarkable abilities left. And that's the reason I'm showing this video to you. Look, here, he climbs on the paddles. You see that? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? And yeah, that's very amazing. And luckily he returns, eh? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and look at this. This is actually the best part of the video. Look at this. There. Hop! Hop a day. Yeah. But now he's stuck again. He was immediately frozen to the ground. Yeah. And you know what is remarkable? Oh. I had never seen this before, but I received hundreds of emails from all around the world by patients just like this 
who had a remarkable ability to compensate for their disease. And you know what? They knew it all along, but we didn't. It was yeah. staring us in the face all the time. It's, rem it's remarkable, yes. Is it clear to you now? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, it's clear, yes. Thank you. Is it all right if I take the podium and spend a few minutes talking to the people, explaining yeah, what we should do? You may go. Okay, I'll be back with you in a minute. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just seen is a remarkable transition in a few minutes' time from a doctor who once was a god in his ivory tower, or actually in a yellow forklift. <laughs> and I think it is time that doctors descend from their ivory tower and become a guide, a coach in the life of patients. We would like to call this participatory healthcare to exemplify that this is a world where doctors and patients are working together on a mutual basis. Of course, the roles are different, but we have mutual respect and we collaborate with each other. And make no mistake, this is not a world where, where patients are ruling, where patients are bossing their doctor, which is what some of my more uh, conservative colleagues are afraid of. This is not what patients want. Patients want to be taken seriously. They want to take actively part in the process. And this is neither a world that is dominated by ICT or gadgets. I think the tools that you've just seen are helpful in supporting this new type of care. But it should always have one goal, and one goal only, is to serve warm human contact because that is what patients are waiting for. And then ICT and all sorts of other technologies can serve that main purpose. Now, if you are still hesitating whether or not you should make that transition yourself, let me just give you a few good reasons. We've heard it today. One is hospitality. I think we should really start to see our patients as clients. For them, a visit to the hospital is a, as an experience. And if we just treat them in the way the bus driver that we've seen earlier today was treating his guest. If we start treating patients this way, I think we're going to make a huge move in the healthcare system. The video of the patient on the bicycle, to me, is a huge source of inspiration. And I am surprised, week in, week out, by the power of patients, how they compensate for their disease, how they battle all the difficulties they encounter every day in their life. And I think today we've seen wonderful examples of all the patients that have been here today showing their power. And I think we are underutilizing that power. And we still think that patients should be treated as passive objects rather than an active subject who can contribute to their own health. And if you're still hesitating, and if not for any other reason, engaging your patients is cost effective. Let me give you one wonderful example. What I normally do in my clinic is tell my patients to come back after, say, three months. But if things go bad, three months is too late. But if you're doing fine, three months is too early. So they've done a randomized clinical trial where in one arm of the study, the doctor traditionally said three months, six months. And in the other arm, the patients were left free to come back whenever they felt the time was right. And do you know what happens? they come less often. The number of no-shows goes down, and the patients are always just on time, because they decide when to come back. And I think those are just wonderful examples of how engaging patients is a way to maintain the quality of care, and at the same time, reduce the costs. And then finally, and we've heard it today, it is a choice. I chose my job because I'm passionate about healthcare. I have compassion for my patients. For me, seeing a patient as a partner, as a sparing partner in the health process, is the only way. I cannot see any other way. And if we start to treat patients as active subjects, working for me as a doctor becomes so much more pleasurable. It becomes so much better, more effective, and again, I think it's not a, it's, in fact, it's almost not a choice. I think it's the only way to move forward. So I tell you, I have a wish cookie, a secret wish cookie. But that wish cookie I want to share with Hans, because Hans is a real patient of mine. He has Parkinson's disease. And I think it's amazing that Hans is here. And Hans, 
Why don't we open that wish cookie together? What do you think? That's a good idea. Shall we press the button? There That's we go. It's okay. participatory health for all of us. We want to thank you. Let's do it all together.